Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and this week we explore the amazing achievements by the space industry throughout 2019. It's been a massive year in space for public and private entities. This year, of course, marks 50 years since Apollo 11. And I don't know about you, but the publicity and amazing achievements going on in the space industry right now is extremely exciting. Here's a rundown of just some of what happened this year. We kick off the year with the flyby by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, which visited the awesome little contact binary roughly 36 kilometers long. This was then later on renamed Arakoth. Almost immediately afterwards on January 3rd, China's National Space Administration achieved the first soft landing on the far side of the moon with its 1200 kilogram lander. The SpaceX launch of Iridium 8 then kicked off, launching 10 Iridium Next satellites from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Air Force Station. This was the eighth and final set of satellites. Then on January 19th, we had the first and only launch of the Delta Heavy rocket in 2019, the NROL-71 vessel, which was carrying a classified payload. January 23rd, the private spaceflight company Blue Origin launched its new Shepard rocket and capsule on NS-10, the 10th mission, the crew capsule here touching down on the dusty Texas plains. This incredible asteroid return mission operated by JAXA launched back in 2014 and took its first surface sample in February this year. Amazing footage of the vessel releasing an impactor to aid in taking this sample. Virgin Galactic's Spaceship 2 flew into space at three times the speed of sound with three crew members on board. This was a huge success for Virgin Galactic in February. SpaceX's second launch of the year, the new Santara Satu mission. This footage had some particularly awesome re-entry footage here and of course the landing on the drone ship, of course I still love you, successful deployment of the payload. Then of course we have the big one, the Crew Dragon Demo 1 mission launched on March the 2nd. The entire mission was pretty much flawless. The Dragon spacecraft successfully launched, all of the pre-checks prior to docking with the space station were completed successfully and of course we docked with the space station head of schedule at 6.02 a.m. on March the 3rd, becoming the first American spacecraft in history to autonomously dock with the International Space Station. Of course, that was only the first half of the mission. The second half was to actually re-enter, come down through the Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the Atlantic Ocean with the aid of the four parachutes that we see there. This was an incredible mission and hopefully we'll be soon seeing that in-flight abort test. Expedition 59 kicked off to the International Space Station with the MS-12 Soyuz spacecraft with three crew, two of which were originally on the previous Soyuz when it aborted at the end of 2018. In March, it was announced that NASA's moon landing goals would be accelerated with a plan to land astronauts on the moon's surface by 2024. Jim Bridenstine announced later in the year that the new program would be named Artemis, which in Greek mythology is the twin sister of Apollo. Some not so great news in March where India tested an anti-satellite weapon, the target of which was a satellite present in low Earth orbit. The test of course sparked a lot of concerns regarding the creations of space debris. In April we of course had announced the first direct visual evidence of a black hole revealed by astronomers working with the Event Horizons Telescope. The black hole here is believed to have a mass 6.5 billion times that of the Sun. Rocket Lab continued breaking ground here with the liftoff of the R3-D2 mission for DARPA. If you're not following Rocket Lab, their launches are just incredible. The footage is on par with SpaceX. And speaking of SpaceX, the ArabSat 6A mission to me was probably the most spectacular launch footage. The separation of the boosters in such beautiful daylight. Everything in this launch went flawlessly. The booster separations, the Falcon Heavy's two side boosters landed at SpaceX's landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The center core landed on the drone ship, of course I still love you, and of course the satellite deployed beautifully. Sadly the same successes can't be said for the Space IL lander in April. In the final stages of the descent onto the moon's surface, the lander's gyroscopes failed, causing a crash landing. The bad news continued in April with the returned crew Dragon vessel being destroyed while doing some intensive tests. The issue 
issues causing this are now believed to be fixed in the latest design prior to of course a crewed mission. Blue Origin aced their 11th test flight of the new Shepard spacecraft. This mission carried 38 experiments on the flight including 9 experiments for NASA. SpaceX's commercial resupply service 17 mission to the International Space Station flew at the start of May. Normally of course the CRS mission would touch down at a landing zone but due to the Crew Dragon explosion investigation still ongoing they instead chose to land on the drone ship stationed only 28 kilometers downrange. In the same month, Jeff Bezos from Blue Origin presented the Blue Moon robotic space cargo carrier and lander for making cargo deliveries to the moon. The vessel is predicted to fly in 2024 on a heavy lift vehicle such as the upcoming New Glenn rocket by Blue Origin proposed for launch uh, sometime in 2021. SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation has been massive news this year with the first bulk deployment with 60 satellites flat packed together on one single launch here on the 24th of May this year. Only a few weeks later in June, SpaceX successfully launched right out of thick fog the Radarsat Constellation mission from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This was amazing footage and the booster return coming back to land at LZ4 was equally as magic passing back into the fog as it touched down. Just amazing footage there. SpaceX then regrouped quickly to launch possibly the most complex mission that they had ever attempted with the Space Test Program 2 mission launched on the third ever Falcon Heavy flight. Again, the booster separated perfectly and touched down at landing zone 1 and 2. From this flight, we later received the most beautiful fairing re-entry footage we've ever seen. This was just incredible to see. The center core from this mission, though, was pushed to the limits, and landing successfully did seem unlikely. Sadly, the center core was lost in this amazing footage. This mission was incredible, with four separate upper stage engine burns, three separate deployment orbits, and a final propulsive passivation maneuver over a six-hour period. Just unreal. Just one of those payloads was the LightSail 2 vessel, a citizen-funded project from the Planetary Society. This little CubeSat and its comparatively massive solar sail is propelled only by sunlight. The Make It Rain mission by a rocket lab launched multiple spacecraft in a rideshare flight here on the Electron vessel in June. This is of course the first rocket to ever use electric pump-fed engines. At the start of July, NASA successfully demonstrated the abort system for its Orion spacecraft in this amazing in-flight test of the system at Cape Canaveral. Now, SpaceX had some issues with parachute tests for the upcoming Crew Dragon capsule and begun moving to a newer Mark III design. This footage released in July was really the beginning of this shift, and we've recently heard that all of these tests are now complete, so that's great news. The CRS-18 mission to the International Space Station I think had the most spectacular single booster landing footage at a landing zone for the year, ripping through the atmosphere and touching down. This was the first time a Dragon cargo capsule was used for a third flight. Lifting off without landing legs or grid fins, the Amos 17 flight in August was unique. This was the third and final flight for this particular Falcon 9 first stage. It was also an awesome mission because this fairing half that was used was caught by SpaceX's mystery ship. Now, fairing half was also caught on the Space Test Program 2 mission, but this was certainly the nicest footage of a catch this year. We were all surprised in August when Rocket Lab announced that they were planning to begin recovery design architecture for the 12.5 ton Electron rocket's first stage to help support an increased launch frequency for small satellites. This footage by United Launch Alliance on this Atlas V launch in August was, I think, the most spectacular shown from ULA this year. Uh, the onboard camera here caught this incredible footage of the fairing and payload shroud falling through the exhaust plume. Launching just before sunrise, the plume was in full daylight while observers at ground level were in near complete darkness. A little shot there of the RL-10 engine firing up as well. In the same month, ULA then launched another with a GPS-3 SV-2 mission. This veteran Delta IV medium made its final voyage ever, sending up a next generation GPS satellite into orbit. After several smaller tests, SpaceX's first prototype for its Starship vehicle aced its final test flight at the end of August, rising just over 150 meters or 500 feet off the ground at Boca Chica, Texas. In September, India's attempt to land on the surface of the moon as part of the Chandrayaan-2 mission failed during the last moments before touchdown. Later on, it was concluded that the crash was caused by a software glitch. 
Information was released this year by NASA announcing that water vapor had been found in the habitable zone of an exoplanet for the first time. Data from the Hubble Space Telescope was used to determine this from the planet around 110 light years away. The very reliable Russian Soyuz continued to launch missions throughout the year. This launch at the end of September here carried three more travelers to the International Space Station. Then standing underneath the massive prototype Mark I Starship, Elon Musk laid out his latest plans for the new stainless steel vehicle at Boca Chica, Texas on September the 28th. The vessel is intended to perform a unique belly flop maneuver through the atmosphere before then flipping over and landing upright on its landing pad, something that we of course really want to see happen soon in a full scale test flight. Footage released at the presentation shows the new Starship now with a heat shield, two fins at the rear rather than the previous three, as well as separate landing legs. The design is of course still evolving as we speak. On October 15th, Jim Bridenstine introduced the new extravehicular mobility unit and the Orion Crew Survival System Suit, which will be worn by the next generation of astronauts to explore the moon as part of the Artemis program. Just a few days later, we watched the first all-woman spacewalk. They replaced a faulty battery charge discharge unit that failed to activate after a previous spacewalk. Boeing's Starliner crew capsule completed its pad abort test in November, a slight hiccup with one chute failing to deploy but still considered a success all the same. This vessel is participating in NASA's commercial crew development program along with Crew Dragon. The second batch of 60 satellites were launched by SpaceX to join the growing broadband internet constellation in orbit. Since the initial launch there has been loads of news due to people spotting these satellites screaming through the sky. In November the same Mark I prototype Starship Elon Musk presented two months earlier was undergoing a pressure test when it ruptured, sending a portion of its top skyward. Since then the vessel has been scrapped and will be replaced by the next version of the Starship. Late November, SpaceX shared footage of the Crew Dragon static fire test. With the parachute test now complete we should be very close to that in-flight abort test. The last month of 2019, NASA's Parker Solar Probe mission discoveries were published, sharing unprecedented data from near the sun for the first time ever. In early December, SpaceX launched its final commercial resupply service mission for the year, CRS-19, carrying a load of new equipment and supplies to the space station. The booster again landed successfully on the drone ship, of course I still love you. Rocket Lab's final launch for the year, the Running Out of Fingers mission, also included the first guided full telemetry re-entry of the Electron launch vehicle's first stage as part of Rocket Lab's plan to reuse and refly rocket boosters in future missions. Blue Origin's final launch of 2019, the NS-12 mission. This was the sixth flight for this particular new Shepard vehicle, and at the time they had reused two boosters five times each, so this launch was the sixth flight to space and back. SpaceX's final flight for the year, the JCSAT-18 Pacific One mission. The booster from this mission previously flew on both the CRS-17 mission in May and the CRS-18 mission in July, so third flight this year for this same booster. An amazing year for SpaceX. Finally, the Starliner orbital test flight. The launch itself was successful, however, an issue with the mission clock meant that the vessel couldn't reach the International Space Station as planned. After a few days in orbit, the Starliner intentionally deorbited and landed on target six days earlier than expected. So there we have it, 2019 in a nutshell, and I'm sure I've missed plenty. What was your favorite missions or achievements in the space industry this year? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, of course, let me know if you think I've missed something that you would have included yourself. 2020 is already ramping up to be even crazier. SpaceX alone looks to have a launch schedule that will by far exceed any previous year. And as you can see here, there's always loads to cover just with Starship development, Crew Dragon, and all that sort of thing. It's going to be an exciting year. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to keep up to date with it all, please do consider subscribing. I'd just like to say a huge thank you as well for the amazing work the community puts into sharing photos and videos and information, particularly the work done in Texas by Boca Chica Gal and NASA Spaceflight, which is always incredible. Lab Padre's footage also is an incredible service to the community, so thank you all for your efforts there. From 
Florida, a huge thank you to John Wincup. Although action has slowed, it will be ramping up again soon, I'm sure. And thank you, of course, to everyone out there, too numerous to mention for all of your amazing work. And to all of my community, my viewers, my subscribers, thank you. Thank you for all your support throughout the year. I hope you're having some awesome time off with the family and friends. Happy New Year to you all. Last but not least, thank you to my quality control squad and Discord community for helping me research and proof these materials for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be part of this, follow my Discord or Twitter links in the description. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video showing a condensed summary of the best SpaceX footage over the years. If you've enjoyed this video, you may certainly get a kick out of that one as well. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.